Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the factors that go into choosing a photo printer. Now to set your expectations right up front, this is not going to be a video that's a product review. I'm not gonna be reviewing my printer, saying what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Instead, I'm gonna talk about the various factors that I considered when I chose a photo printer so that you can start thinking about what matters to you and what are the important things to look for in a printer if you're getting into printing. So with that, of course, the first question I always get asked is what printer do you have? I'm using an Epson P800. That was the right choice for me from a variety of factors, which I'll talk about in a moment. I will say that it is a purpose driven choice, meaning it will print my photos. That's all I want it to do. It's not an all in one printer. I'm not looking to print documents or anything else on it. So that was you know, one of the first factors is what am I going to use this printer for? It's just for photos, but other brands are going to work as well. Canon is the other leader in, in printers. So consider whatever brand makes sense for you, which ones you have experience with in the past, perhaps which ones are on sale when you're looking to get your printer. That was uh, that was one of the reasons I ended up with the P800 as opposed to one of the other Epson printers. So with that, let's talk about a few of the factors to consider when you're looking at a photo printer purchase. The first factor I considered is how big of a print can I make? You know, What's the maximum print size I could do on the printer? And I'm a landscape guy, so I want to make reasonably large prints. Uh, but you know, I'm probably not going to make you know a, a 40 inch by 60 inch print on a regular basis. That would be too much printer for me to personally own. I can you know, farm that out to a lab. But what was the what was the happy medium for me? Uh, so for me, the uh, the the factor was I wanted at least a 16 by 20 or a 16 by 24 print at home. I'll do those reasonably often. Often enough that I can you know, really justify the, the purchase of a printer that size, like the photos on the wall behind me. Those are 16 by 20s. I did those here right in the studio. And I do other size prints like that as well. Of course, you can go smaller. That's easy. But uh, that um, automatically put me in a certain class of printer. It was beyond maybe what would be uh, more suitable for a portrait photographer, where maybe a 13-inch printer would be okay. So uh, I went with the P800. Uh, first factor was met, where it has a 17-inch wide bay. So on the uh, the shortest side, it can be 17 inches. So I can put a 16 by 24 sheet of paper in there and come out with a 16 by 24 print. Uh, as a little bonus, I could also attach a roller to this printer. And so uh, I considered that as well. I haven't purchased a roller. Uh, I'm not at the stage where I'm printing panoramas on such a regular basis that I need to make that investment both in the roller as well as you know a gigantic roll of paper. But it's nice to have that option. So think about the print sizes that you are most likely to print and factor that into your decision. Second factor to consider is color, and kind of what I mean by that is how good is the photo going to look when you print it. And a general rule of thumb is look at the ink that the printer has. How many cartridges does it have? One, four, nine. What's what's the what's the variations of colors that are available to the printer to make the print? And you know, the rule of thumb: if there's more cartridges, chances are it's going to make uh, more subtle differences between colors. Uh, you know, nice and obvious and, and clear. You've got a wider gamut to work with. Uh, case in point, this here, this is two of the three black cartridges of ink that are in the P800. This one's a light, light black, then there's light black, and there's black. So for black and white prints, uh, I've got a lot of different tones that can be mixed by the printer and represent those subtle differences in shadow uh, or brightness with you know with more ink available to it more shades of ink so uh, that's another consideration to look at is what's the, the the type of cartridges it's using how many of them are there what are the, the differences in color between them take a look at that when you're looking into a printer so these uh, ink cartridges also bring up the third point which is cost obviously there's the cost of the printer that's probably going to be the smallest cost over the lifetime of the printer the ink will be the longer term recurring cost. So how much does the ink cost to refill the printer? And that will vary from printer to printer. Uh, it's a trade-off. More cartridges you have, well, the more expensive it's going to be to refill them. Uh, does the printer require that you refill all the cartridges at the same time? 
Uh, I don't know about anyone else, but my printing uh, habits that tend to drain certain colors more than others. I was holding up this blue one here. I shoot the ocean a lot and I'm a landscape guy. Blue skies, blue water. I go through blue a lot faster than I go through some other colors. So how much does it cost to refill the ink in your printer? And of course, a logical question is how often am I going to need to replace the ink? There's no one answer for that because it does depend on your printing habits. I'll give a shout out to Red River Paper. They've got some good information on their website sharing some you know work and calculations they've done to say what's the cost of printing at home versus you know sending something out to a lab. It doesn't consider the cost of your printer, but it does consider you know the cost of ink the cost of the paper. So that's a resource you can go look at as you're figuring out, you know, what is my budget for the printer and what is my recurring budget for refilling the ink? Another thing to think about is the connectivity of the printer. When I got the P800, I was excited because, oh, wow, great, it's wireless. Well, you know what? It didn't work very well wirelessly. Uh, I had connection failures. And when you're printing a 16 by 20 photo and it loses connection halfway through, you're not happy. So I just went with cabled, you know, those you know, good old fashioned wires. But the, the, the Wi-Fi capability of the printer, is that something that you're interested in or something that your space requires? You just don't have the ability to cable it up to whatever it is you're going to print from. Or are you doing a lot of mobile photography? Do you want a printer that supports something like AirPrint from Apple so you can print directly from your mobile device to the printer? So these are the kind of things to consider uh, connectivity wise. Uh, I classify that as kind of a second level factor. Um, you know, if, if a printer didn't have uh, Wi-Fi or AirPrint, uh, but everything else, it was stellar for my, my needs, I'd probably still buy that because I know I can cable it to my machine. And for those larger prints, uh, that's more time for, you know, something strange to happen with Wi-Fi and mess up your print. So um, I'm a big fan of just good old fashioned cabled for the large type prints. But connectivity, think about that when you're looking into a printer. Another recommendation is to reach out to fellow photographers and get their advice. And I'm talking about the folks that you love their work, you value their opinion. Yes, we can read the online reviews and we can go look at the product reviews from the industry sources. Those are good things to do, of course. Look for trends that would you know, dissuade you from getting a particular printer or there's a, a particular factor that we've talked about that doesn't match with what you need. But after that, if you've got a trusted source and you can talk with that person, get their advice. Uh, I did that when I was deciding whether or not to buy the P800, reached out to one of my photo buddies, know that he does a lot of printing, really like his work, and valued his opinion. He gave me a bunch of information. It ended up working out for me. It made sense for me to go with this printer. But you know, I got some, you know, some, some straight shooting, some clear advice, and uh, that was invaluable to me, and it made me that much more confident in the purchase. So those are the things that I considered when I was in the market for a photo printer. I hope that you found it useful and it uh, breaks things down for a pretty good approach to deciding on a printer that's going to suit your needs. That's really the key thing. Make sure it suits your needs. Your needs are going to be different than any other photographers out there. So it's okay to get a printer that's different from you know someone else. You know, Get the advice, do the research, and you'll, you'll make a good decision. One thing I'll add in though, whatever printer you get, add in a dust cover. I had mine for about three or so weeks and I was surprised how much dust there is in the studio here. I added a dust cover afterward. I don't want dust getting inside the printer and you know gunking up the heads of the wheels or any of the other mechanisms that are in there. As, as pretty good as the, uh, the P800 is about closing over and keeping itself kind of protected, uh, the dust cover was definitely a, a worthwhile investment. So add that one in too. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport and happy shooting.